tap into your superpower. May 20th at 7.30 p.m. right here at Christian Life Center Worldwide. It's almost time for Summer Camp 2022. Featuring all the fun, activities, adventure, and discovery that you've come to expect. Summer Camp is for children and teens from five years to 17 years old. This year, Summer Camp runs from June 6th through July 29th. Registration has begun, so make sure to reserve a spot for your youngsters today. The CLC Summer Camp is now taking employment applications for certified teachers for grades kindergarten through eighth and for camp counselors 18 years of age and older. Log on to clcww.org for employment applications. Email us at summercamp at clcww.org for any other questions. Get ready for Summer Camp 2022. Make sure you sign your kids up today. Christian Life Center Worldwide invites you to tap in to your superpower. Friday, May 20th at 7.30 p.m. Right here at Christian Life Center Worldwide. You don't want to miss this. With your host, Dr. Carl Miller, and special guest host, Brandon B.G. Gatson. What's up, everybody? It's B.G. Brandon Gatson, and I will be with the Dr. Carl Miller, May 20th, for Tap Into Your Superpower. This next level interaction experience will absolutely revolutionize the way you live your life. So join us as we demonstrate the power of God that's within you, and I am telling you, you will never be the same. Join us as we tap in to your superpower. May 20th at 7.30 p.m. right here at Christian Life Center Worldwide. Thanks for joining us today here at CLC, where we experience God's reality, God's initiative, and God's provision. And as always at CLC, Community Matters. Now on behalf of Pastor Carl and Lady Ruth, enjoy the rest of your day and we will see you next time. Parents, it's almost time for Summer Camp 2022. Featuring all the fun, activities, adventure, and discovery that you've come to expect. Summer Camp is for children and teens from 5 years to 17 years old. This year, Summer Camp runs from June 6th through July 29th. Registration has begun, so make sure to reserve a spot for your youngsters today. The CLC Summer Camp is now taking employment applications for certified teachers for grades kindergarten through 8th and for camp counselors 18 years of age and older. Log on to clcww.org for employment applications. Email us at summercamp at clcww.org for any other questions. Get ready for Summer Camp 2022. Make sure you sign your kids up today. Christian Life Center Worldwide invites you to tap in to your superpower. Friday, May 20th at 7.30 p.m. Right here at Christian Life Center Worldwide. You don't want to miss this. With your host, Dr. Carl Miller, and special guest host, Brandon B.G. Gatson. What's up, everybody? It's B.G. Brandon Gatson, and I will be with the Dr. Carl Miller May 20th for Tap Into Your Superpower. This next level interaction experience will absolutely revolutionize the way you live your life. So join us as we demonstrate the power of God that's within you, and I am telling you, you will never be the same. Join us as we tap in to your superpower. May 20th at 7.30 p.m. right here at Christian Life Center Worldwide. Thanks for joining us today here at CLC, where we experience God's reality, God's initiative, and God's provision. And as always at CLC, Community Matters. Now on behalf of Pastor Carl and Lady Ruth, enjoy the rest of
of your day, and we will see you next time. It's almost time for Summer Camp 2022. Featuring all the fun, activities, adventure, and discovery that you've come to expect. Summer Camp is for children and teens from 5 years to 17 years old. This year, Summer Camp runs from June 6th through July 29th. Registration has begun, so make sure to reserve a spot for your youngsters today. The CLC Summer Camp is now taking employment applications for certified teachers for grades kindergarten through 8th and for camp counselors 18 years of age and older. Log on to clcww.org for employment applications. Email us at summercamp at clcww.org for any other questions. Get ready for Summer Camp 2022. Make sure you sign your kids up today. Christian Life Center Worldwide invites you to tap in to your superpower. Friday, May 20th at 7.30 p.m right here at Christian Life Center Worldwide. You don't want to miss this. With your host, Dr. Carl Miller, and special guest host, Brandon B.G. Gatson. What's up, everybody? It's B.G. Brandon Gatson, and I will be with the Dr. Carl Miller, May 20th, for Tap Into Your Superpower. This next level interaction experience will absolutely revolutionize the way you live your life. So join us as we demonstrate the power of God that's within you. And I am telling you, you will never be the same. Join us as we tap in to your superpower. May 20th at 7.30 p.m. right here at Christian Life Center Worldwide. Thanks for joining us today here at CLC, where we experience God's reality, God's initiative, and God's provision. And as always at CLC, Community Matters. Now on behalf of Pastor Carl and Lady Ruth, enjoy the rest of your day and we will see you next time. Parents, it's almost time for Summer Camp 2022. Featuring all the fun, activities, adventure, and discovery that you've come to expect. Summer Camp is for children and teens from 5 years to 17 years old. This year, Summer Camp runs from June 6th through July 29th. Registration has begun, so make sure to reserve a spot for your youngsters today. The CLC Summer Camp is now taking employment applications for certified teachers for grades kindergarten through 8th and for camp counselors 18 years of age and older. Log on to clcww.org for employment applications. Email us at summercamp at clcww.org for any other questions. Get ready for Summer Camp 2022. Make sure you sign your kids up today. Christian Life Center Worldwide invites you to tap in to your superpower. Friday, May 20th at 7.30 p.m. Right here at Christian Life Center Worldwide. You don't want to miss this. With your host, Dr. Carl Miller, and special guest host, Brandon B.G. Gatson. What's up, everybody? It's B.G. Brandon Gatson, and I will be with the Dr. Carl Miller, May 20th, for Tap Into Your Superpower. This next level interaction experience will absolutely revolutionize the way you live your life. So join us as we demonstrate the power of God that's within you, and I am telling you, you will never be the same. Join us as we tap in to your superpower. May 20th at 7.30 p.m. right here at Christian Life Center Worldwide. Thanks for joining us today here at CLC, where we experience God's reality, God's initiative, and God's provision. And as always at CLC, Community Matters. Now on behalf of Pastor Carl and Lady Ruth, enjoy the rest of your day and we will see you next time.
of God, thank you so much for being here tonight. Amen. Tonight is a special night. We pray in the name of Jesus that you came with a spirit of expectancy. I know that if you came out on a Friday night, you're hungry after God. You're hungry after what the spirit of the Lord will say and do in our midst. And so tonight is going to require you to posture yourself differently. We're going to need you to help us and come in with us as we worship the Lord together. We're not up here. It's not a concert, but we have gathered together in his name to worship him tonight because he is God and he alone is worthy of all the glory, all of the honor. We don't want to draw near with our words, but we want to draw near with our hearts tonight. Come on, he sees us. He knows us. Hallelujah. And it is his pleasure to be with us tonight. So we want to honor the Lord and glorify him in this place. Would you put your hands together as a sign that you're in agreement for the will and mind of God to take place tonight? Come on, I need you to do a little bit better than that. Come on, shake off the day, shake off the week. Come on, God can do more for you in five minutes than you can do in a lifetime. Come on, if we can just get into his presence tonight, if we can just press beyond the veil of our flesh and our tired bodies, there is a place that we can get in him tonight where, hallelujah, he can be glorified in Jesus' name. Come on and bless him tonight. We want to welcome our online audience. If you're with us, we want to welcome you as well tonight. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Come on, say it's in Jesus' name.
Your 
That's it. Come on, lift up your hands. Come on, lift up your voices. Just begin to worship God. Lift up your voices now. Open up your hearts and minds. God wants to do something even before we start. Hallelujah. Let him have his way. Press your way in now. Press your way in. Father, we thank you. God, we honor you. We bless you, almighty God. Thank you for being in our lives. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for making a way. Thank you for pouring out your spirit. Thank you for empowering us and equipping us. Thank you for healing and delivering us, almighty God. We give you glory, Father, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We lift you up, oh God. We lift you up, oh God. Holy Spirit, have your way. 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 You are free to move, God. Move how you want to move. Touch who you want to touch, God. Deliver now in the name of Jesus. Hey, we bless your name. We return to give you thanks. We return to give you glory. you, oh God. You are bigger than our circumstances. You're bigger than our faults, God. You're bigger than the storm, bigger than the attack against our lives, oh God. You are the great I am, and we honor you and bless you, God, and we recognize you as being such. You are our answer, God. You are Are you ready? <laughs> Somebody shout, I stay ready. Welcome to tap into your superpower. Oh, there's no better place that you can be on Friday night, hallelujah. Woo! My God from heaven. Hallelujah. You can sit down for a second. What, what is that chorus part? All the, all the, all the earth will shout your grace. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Drums announce <laughs> the coming of the Savior. They announce the presence of God. Listen to him. Listen to him. Listen to him. Hallelujah. God's getting ready to do something in your life. You can feel it and sense it. Glory to God. If you're ready, if you allow him to, tonight is going to change something. Hallelujah. I hear, I hear the sound of the Savior. Glory to God.
<laughs> if you're ready, he's ready. If you're ready, he's ready. We just took a couple extra minutes. If you're ready, he's ready. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, praise team. Bring y'all back in just a few moments. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Interpretation in the house. For I am ready to answer your anticipation. Call upon me, says the Lord, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't know about. Some of you have thought you don't have access to me. I'm here to reveal myself and make myself known. Have I not spoken? Have I not appointed? Have I not shared? I'm speaking through my servants to you tonight so you will understand and know and recognize who I am in you. You have supernatural access. Tap into me tonight, says the Lord. We cancel every assignment of the enemy over our lives tonight. And Father, we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. We receive the release of the supernatural in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your hearts, says the Lord. Open your spirit, says the Lord. And there will be a divine release. Amen. The Lord a great big God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Now, <clears throat> the Lord has started already. Hallelujah. Tonight is going to be great. This is what I want you to do. First of all, welcome to tap into your superpower. Amen. So, <clears throat> As you can tell, this is not church as usual, so relax. Uh, not that you're uptight at church, because y'all know we, we get down. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Uh, but uh, certainly relax. Uh, this will be more of an interactive workshop, seminar type uh, of gathering. Amen. We're going to do a lot. Hallelujah. And uh, we're going to talk a lot. We're going to talk back and forth. This is not lecture style, so there will be points of, of engagement for you. Amen. And so since we're start talking about engagement, let's start right away. The first thing I want you to do is quickly share the live stream. If you haven't done so already, share it. Those of you who are watching streaming live, God bless you. Welcome or worshiping streaming live. Welcome. Amen. We're excited about what God is going to do. We wish you were here. There is still time. As you can see, we ended up worshiping for 30 minutes. You can still get here. 
if you uh, so go ahead and share the live stream update your your uh, social media status let them know that we are streaming live and and share the link so that they can watch this is a great way for you to practice evangelism it is not the best way but it is a great way amen for you to share it hallelujah and uh, uh, help others to be able to engage with the teaching and what we're doing here at Christian Life Center worldwide amen hallelujah I'm really excited and I believe that you're excited too amen all right, there's going to be a level of engagement tonight that you wouldn't normally have at a church service, but this is not a regular church service, amen? Hallelujah, this is going to be good. All right, uh, now, this is what I want you to do. Uh, first of all, let me bring up my friend Brandon Gaston is here. Gaston is here. He's going to help me teach today. Hallelujah. Brandon is going to help me teach today. It's going to be fantastic, and we're going to have a marvelous time. I'll take it, Sam. Thank you. Go ahead and bring it on up. Thank you. We're going to have a marvelous time. Now, <clears throat> before we get started, I want to share some things with you, okay? Uh, I, the things that we're going to share tonight will be, some of them, uh, it may be, for some of you, it may be revelation that you've never even heard before. Amen? Amen. Some of you have heard it before, but we'll be teaching and sharing some things from a perspective that you may not have considered before. Amen. Amen. What I want you to do is to open up your mind to study the word with us as we walk through and reveal concepts and principles of the kingdom of God and the word of God that you may not have known existed. Now, listen. You're not just a spectator, you're a participator, but most importantly, I want you to commit to the exercise of listening with the purpose of sharing this information or teaching it yourself. That's a different kind of listening. When you know you have to teach it to somebody else, y'all got it? Now, if you have not already done so, I did take the liberty of typing out a lot of notes for you. Where are they? They're in the app. Go right to your app, pull up, the, pull up the notes. You can make your own notes right there in the margin. You will be able to follow along with us. Amen. Then, of course, I, I put in maybe 15 fill-ins to make sure that you're paying attention. Praise the Lord. Uh, wait, I did do a PowerPoint presentation, so you'll be able to follow on the screen. Hallelujah. It's going to be fun. We're going to have some fun tonight. And you're going to discover you have a superpower dwelling in you that you may not have known about. And we're going to show you how to activate it, how to tap in. Everybody say tap in. Tap in. Amen. Jesus Christ, when he was on the planet, you know how WWF do, they be wrestling and the other, the tag team, they can't come in until you tap your hand. Well, Jesus has tapped your hand. He's been waiting on us to get in the ring, amen. Let's get in and make it happen. Some of the ladies are like, what? What are you talking about? All right, all right, don't worry about it. Praise the Lord. Amen. You'll understand in a few moments. Now, Brandon and I are going to be tag teaming, so we're going to be going back and forth, back and forth, uh, sharing some things. I'm going to ask Brandon to take the lead. Normally, I would take the lead. I'm going to ask Brandon to take the lead. This is going to be real good. Hallelujah. And I'm going to chime in and get in where I fit in over and over again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready? Come on. Give Brandon a great big God bless you. Praise the Lord. Oh. I'm so messed up by the worship and the praise <laughs> and just the fire that's in this house. Can y'all just help me celebrate the angels of this house? Come on, step to your feet and help me celebrate the angels of this house. Amen. Such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful family, team, couple, powerhouse. It's incredible. Um, and I would be remiss not to celebrate my pops that's in the building over here. Yes, sir. All blue. Everything blue. My auntie is here. My auntie Lisa. And my good bro, Ivan Kennedy, is in the building. So, And Reggie and his beautiful wife who's celebrating their anniversary. But they said they wanted to be here. So I'm so what? excited about that. Praise the Lord. Yes. Okay, so a couple of things. Just look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. I need, you I need you 
to be lit tonight. Not casual, not chill, not conservative. I need you to be lit. Now get a response for them. Ask them are they gonna be lit tonight. See what they're gonna say. Get a response, get a response. All right. We lit? Okay. So, um, all right, so this is how we'll kick this thing off. Tonight, once again, it's gonna be an incredible night. We need your interaction. This is a workshop, so it's very, um, it's very interactive, it's very um, engaging. I wanted to say it's very relaxing, but I don't want you to relax. But it's like we're in the living room and we're talking through some things back and forth and we'll demonstrate some things and then make sure that you can demonstrate them too. Is that cool? Okay, so the first, the first thought that's taken us into our direction tonight, I know mm -hmm. you guys have an app. I, I thought that was so fancy. I don't have an app for what I'm doing. I'm jealous, but I'll be all right. So tonight, tap into your superpower. If you guys have your notes, you can follow along in your app or in your notes, and I think they're gonna put it up on the screen. Um, and as you can see, the first thought that's on here is that man, this is what makes us so unique. <clears throat> so different is that man is God's revelation. Now you got to really think about what we're saying. Man is God's revelation. It is absolutely impossible to know God apart from man. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what do we go to in order to learn about God? Uh, what, say it again, the what? The word. Did the Holy Spirit write it? He inspired it, but who wrote it? Why do we go to church? Why do you go on YouTube and Facebook and you watch these sermons? Because you're able to learn, connect, grow in your relationship with God through his likeness and image. And his likeness and image, and I'm in Atlanta, I'm back home, so I can be real, I can use some Ebonics. His likeness, his image is you, is me, is us, is I. Without you and I, God cannot be known. Mm -hmm. So much so that when man fell, he had to come as a man to reveal who he is. He tried it as God on Mount Sinai. And man was like, no, Moses, I don't know what that is, this lightning, this thunder, this voice. We want no parts of that. You go. Uh -huh. But when he came as a man, things changed. Yeah. And he became the model for all of man because Jesus is not the only one to be the revelation of the Father. Uh -huh. He's not supposed to be the only one to say, to see me is to see the Father. Because anyone else that embodies what he embodies would be able to say the same thing. Being led by the same spirit. Amen? So without man, God has chosen not to reveal who he is. So what does this really mean? There's a verse that is just as important to me, just as important as John 3.16. Because John 3.16 says what? That who are... Okay, that verse deals with God's heart after you fail. Okay, so that's the after effect. What was the original though? The original was Isaiah 43 and 7. Because Isaiah 43 and 7 tells you why God created you, 
Then when that got lost, then you got the John 3.16, because in John 3.16, he's going to bring back Isaiah 43 and 7. The verse is so important that Pastor and I started a group. He don't even know we started a group until right now. We started a group. We are this rapping, singing tangent that travel all over the mm-hmm. world, rapping and teaching people verses. And tonight, you are just blessed to be in the building to have us perform this song for you called Isaiah 43 and 7. Now, you don't go to no concert, no place where you don't get involved. Mm -hmm. So, I know you're so sanctified. If if you have to imagine that you was at, I'm in ATL, I don't even know if these clubs still exist. But if you have to imagine that you was at the bounce. I knew knew, knew somebody was there last night. Um, Is 559 still open? I mean, I know. Okay, well, help me out then. I know you've been there. SO, Club SO. Pretend like you're somewhere that you shouldn't be. If you have to. But if you know God is enough, you won't even... No, no, okay. So we're going we to learn this verse. Is the drummer still over there? Is he, is he still... Is the over? drummer's over there. You got a DJ? Jay, Jay pull, up, pull up our uh, our lyrics. Isaiah 43 and 7. Yeah, and then DJ, like, Ben, what's up, Ben? We need something like... I mean, we King, need something. It's in my PowerPoint. New King James. Put it up there. Can, can, the, can the band give us something? I mean, give us something yes, dope. It. Yeah, give me just give me a beat real quick. Is the drummer in there? Yeah. yeah, come on, give me some. Come on now, yeah. Okay. I... Can you feel right. that? What, what? Okay, need, what are the keys? We need something different? Can you no, that's me? cool, that's cool. I just need the keys to come on in or something. For my glory. Why are you here? Whom I have created for my glory. Well, 
What does it say? So why has God created you? Glory is another word for revelation. Glory means to show something, to reveal something. So does revelation. So without man... There is no glory of God in the earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Y'all like need to follow us on Facebook. <laughs> we just went viral. We just went viral right there. We just went viral. Okay, We're so going to get tens of tens of likes. Come on this. now. <laughs> right, tens of fives, of twos, of ones, and then three shares. <laughs> The band is on point. Look at him. All right, brother. You just got a raise, my man of God. Okay, okay, okay. So Isaiah 43 and 7 says, To all who are called my, or everyone who is called by my name, whom I have, why? For my glory. Now check this out. Romans 6 and 4 says, Romans 6 and 4 says, Jesus was raised from the dead. Watch this. By the glory of God. Think about this. Watch Thanks. this. Jesus was raised from the dead mm -hmm. by the glory of God. Hmm, wait a minute. But we are your glory in the earth. We were created for your glory. So how was Jesus raised from the dead by the glory of God? Add in Romans 8 and 11. The same spirit mm -hmm. that raised Jesus from the dead shall also quicken mm -hmm. your physical body, your mortal body. So what is Paul calling the glory of God? The spirit. Paul said Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now lives in you. You were created for God's glory, and God's glory is his spirit. So you're actually created for the Holy Spirit. You a house fit for a king. So the Holy Spirit shouldn't be no stranger to us because we're actually created for him. So the Holy Spirit is the one that reveals God, but guess who he does it through? And that's why you are the revelation of God. Amen. Ethan, you want to chime in on it? Uh, no, I just want to say that I think that this is very important because of all the other messages that you receive. All the other messages of inadequacy, of brokenness, of defeat and failure, all the messages that we've received from the world and sometimes from irresponsible hating others, let me say that, uh, who are not responsible with their words. And sometimes even our situations and circumstances speak to us. They have, our circumstances has loud voices. But none of the things, watch now, none of the things that I've gone through None of the messages that I've heard or that have been conveyed to me will ever change the truth. I was created for his glory. No, no, no. That's who you really are. Even if, you, oh, glory, I, I might go too far. Even, even if someone, you, you know, you, 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 were, you were violated, you were abused. 
And those, you know, those things can start making you look in the mirror and say, what's wrong with me? What did I do? And we start believing the message that has been sent. When the truth of the matter is, is that I was created for his glory. I was created to house the presence of God. We're going to talk about that in a few moments. But, but, but re listen to me. Reset your mind now. The enemy uses what you've gone through as a doorway, a gateway now, to oppress you and keep you in bondage. But the same spirit, same God that raised Jesus from the grave will raise or quicken your mortal bodies. Listen to what he's saying. If he was able to bring Jesus from the grave, then God is surely able to raise you out of a dead situation. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The revelation that he's bringing now is all to help get you ready for what God wants to do in your life next. Amen. Go ahead, BG. Amen. That's incredible. All right, so our first, our next verse that's on here is John 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the word, and without the word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the word was life, and the life was the light for all men. All right? Now watch how these verses work together. The word became flesh. So when John first started, he was talking about the word, which was God. He's not talking about the man, which was Jesus. He started off saying the word was with God, was God, 100% God. No beginning, no end, just divine. Then he said, okay, because right now he's explaining Christ. But then he said the word became a man, became flesh, mm -hmm. right? And made his home among us. We have seen his Like that of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. You, Matthew 5, you are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill cannot be hidden. You can't hide the city because the light is on. Because when light comes on, Things are revealed. So whatever this light is, is a revelation. Because revelation means to reveal. When you're looking for something in the room, the lights are off, right? And then you cut the light on, and you now see everything that's there. Everything has been revealed. Now we have a revelation of what was in the room. So whenever you have a light, it is for revealing something. You are the light of the world. So that means you're created to reveal something. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on top of a lampstand, and it shines on all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people. Why? So that they can see the good things you do and praise your Father who is in heaven. So they'll see the things that you're doing and say, it's impossible for a man to do this 
It points them to God. Now watch this. This is the connection right here. The first passage that we read, verse 3, everything came into being through him, through the word, and without the word, nothing came into being. What came, uh, what came into being through the word was life, and the life was the light of men. So here's what he's saying. He's saying, when the word came, the word brought a certain type of life, that Jesus lived a certain type of life. The certain type of life he lived consists of a certain type of health. He was healthy. He had a certain type of blood. He had a certain type of lineage. He had a certain type of thinking. He had a certain type of perspective. The scripture calls that life Zoe. It is the very life of God that he had. Okay, right? So he said that his Life is your light. Yes, sir. In him was life, mm -hmm. and his life was the light of men. Yes. Let your light shine that people may see. What is really shining? The type of life that Jesus had is now given to you. Yes. And that's the thing you shine forth in order to reveal God. So when you show his type of life, his type of forgiveness, his type of mercy, his type of thinking towards family, government, media, entertainment, his kind of esteem towards yourself, when you live that way, that becomes a light to people that are in darkness, which means people that don't know anything about that life, people that don't know anything about that light. Now they see your light and say, wow. This comes from God. <laughs> so what's the point? The original point. That without you, it's impossible for him to be seen. A basket-headed Christian hides God from people. When you turn off the light, the revelation he's given you, your personal testimonies, when you keep that to yourself, we keep people in the dark and have prayer meetings about how we want them to see God, yet we won't shine him. Because without you, it's impossible for him to be known. No, I just want to say, don't be a basket head. Don't play. Don't play. Let's go to the next point, BJ. Basket headed ready. Christians. Yeah. Take that basket, basket out, girl. Take, take that basket. Take that basket out, girl. All the, right. the, but I do want to. I do want to add though that uh, when you read the scripture, one of the things that he said is that uh, that light that they don't hide it. Instead, they put it on a lampstand so that it can shine light on all people. The key is is that uh, I want you to understand that it is imperative uh, that you understand how important you are to those who are in darkness. As Brandon just shared with us, if God is going to bring revelation, if he's going to bring deliverance, how else is he going to get the, it to them except through you? We really do have a responsibility to carry the presence, the power, and the light of God to the lost world, to a lost world that's steeped in darkness. Yeah, you can't sit back. Just, as he said a few moments ago, don't be a basket head. Take the basket off your head. Let your light shine. Christians misinterpreted that scripture. They've been walking around. No, look at me. Look at my anointing. Look how awesome I am. Look what I do. This is what you should be doing. No. No. It's not even about you. It's about him. The revelation we bring is a revelation of the light. That light is the life. Amen. Come on, BG. Let's go. Yeah, just open up something. You, can I just say one more thing? Yes, sir. Why were you created? What's the verse? Isaiah. What does it say? What does it say? What does it say? Okay, y'all remixing. Y'all doing the message version. Okay, hold up. Everyone who is called by my name, whom for who I have created for so, it's 
It's a violation and illegal to live for yourself because you're not created for you. You just said you created for his glory. So the moment you start living for yours, you're supposed to break down, malfunction, be confused, frustrated, and all those kind of things. Because you're trying to serve something that's not worth serving. That's why selfishness is such a detriment. Because it's a perversion on why you were created. You opened that up, man. Yes, God. sir. Jeez. And you rolled it out. Because we, we're this tag team duo yeah, that's traveling the world. CLC. Let's go, let's go. CLC. Let's go, let's go. Don't play with me. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here, man. Your family, baby. Your wife swore me in in the back. I got jumped in. I'm here, baby. First lady. Okay, okay. So what is light? We just, we just, light is revelation, but check this out. What in creation, think about this, real question. What in creation has the ability to contain immeasurable power? Right now. Us? Why do you say us? Let me just ask you. I say that because, like you said, uh, God gave us the ability to operate light. So we have the power to stay full of God. Okay. Okay. She said us. So, 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 so what has the ability to contain immeasurable power in the earth or in, the, the, in creation? God. Somebody, somebody said man. Who said Man. I say, why you say man, Felton? So Adam was created by God, and in the beginning, he had, and at the time, he had immeasurable, uh, uh, immeasurable power and the ability to rule and operate like God in the earth, okay? So you're, so you're saying that Adam, at the time, is like a superhero. He's like, he's like, he's got superpower. Okay. Okay. All right. He said man, so you're talking about spirit, right? You're talking about- You're saying spirit? Spirit. That's, man is a spirit. He, he possesses a, and he lives in a, so you're saying the part of man that has the power to contain that would be our spirit. That's what y'all saying. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, let's watch this. Just turn your eyes to the screen. Let's watch this. I want to share something with you. you I just want a screen like this in my house. You, <laughs> you want to anoint in, in part man again? <laughs> I t in Jesus' name. Once I lay my hands on you, you're going to receive. Watch this. In Jesus' name. Watch. Watch. The man in God then. <laughs> Watch. Hallelujah. So, so, so we're going to show you a clip. Those of you who are watching on Facebook and streaming live, let, let me just say this. We're going to mute you just for a second. The camera is still going to be on me and, uh, and uh, BG, but, but we got to mute you for a second because we don't want the Facebook al algorithm to pick it up and then shut, shut it down because we're getting ready to show them a clip from the Avengers, the Infinity Wars, right? Uh, that was aired in 2018, I think it was. So, so, so just, it's going to mute. You're not gone. We're still here, uh, but the congregation is going to hear was and and see what's happening and the clip is only about a minute and 50 seconds so it won't be long just hang tight and we'll be right back just stay with us amen watch this because we're getting ready to show you an illustration of what it what it is amen to the side
Somebody said, mm. <laughs> mm. Okay, so a, a quick update for those who have not seen this movie. How many of you guys have not seen this movie? Oh, Lord have mercy. Now, we thought we were picking something that everybody's going to know about. Everybody was sitting there watching, like, let it keep playing. Lord have mercy. Can, can, can I do something real quick? Yeah, go ahead. How, how, how many of y'all have seen Friday? If, if you haven't seen Friday, put your hand down. If you haven't seen, we should have did a clip from Friday. Smoke it. No, okay. okay, so, wow. Can you sum up the movie? You do a better job of summing up, like, Thanos and all this. All right, so, so Thanos is, is like a, he's like a super villain, right? That, as you can see, he can't be killed or extremely hard to kill. And so Thanos is searching for all of these infinity stones, which you saw in his glove that is called the gauntlet. Each stone represents a certain type of power. There's the soul stone, the time stone, the power stone, and so on and so forth. Right? And so they are fighting against him, and Thanos has this thing that the cosmos or the galaxy, the universe, is overpopulated. So he says that the universe would be better if we eliminated half the people, half the beings in the, in the universe. So once he got all those stones together, he had all the power, he snapped his finger, and he eliminated 50% of all beings that existed on any planet throughout the entire universe. We thought you had seen the movie. We were getting ready to draw a stark contrast between the gauntlet, which I will we'll explain. It's, in fact, uh, uh, pull up the next slide so I can explain each infinity stone, please. Jesus, preparation, hallelujah. There you go. So as you saw, we're going to show you the, his hand in a moment but he had a gauntlet on. The gauntlet is, a, is what was able to contain the stones. There is the space stone, it was blue. The reality stone, it was red. With that reality stone, he could change realities and those kind of things. There's the power stone, which is purple. The mind stone, which is yellow. He can get into your mind, make you see things and control you. With the time stone, it was green. He can go back in time, go forward in time, reverse time, rewind time. He can do all that. And then, of course, there was the soul stone. All of those stones were symbolic. We were drawing a contrast. When you brought all those stones together, they were the most powerful thing in existence. And so we were drawing a stark contrast with the next slide, which is God. God is El Shaddai. He is Almighty God. He is Elohim. Shout. That's he good. is Come the on. mighty creator. He is Adonai. He is Lord. He is Abba. He is Father. He is El Elyon, God Most High. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, y'all haven't seen the movie. Y'all making us just messed up our whole illustration. Praise the Lord. If you'll bring up the next slide, please. Here it is. The gauntlet, and I'm going to let BG chime in. The gauntlet, which is the glove, represents the flesh. That's the only thing that can contain the power that is immeasurable. The stones are the immeasurable power. They represent God. And Thanos represents man. So when we said, what in the universe that was created in creation that has the ability to contain immeasurable power, it was you. It was the flesh. Only the flesh can contain the spirit of God. Only the flesh. We're going to talk about this in a moment because there's some things that we've been told about the flesh that we're going to demystify and renew your mind on. God created the flesh to hold the most powerful thing in the universe, which is his spirit. Glory to God. Go ahead, BG. I done got too excited. You can Lord, go home mercy. right now. I mean, that's Jesus. Look at here. Wow. My God. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
Y'all didn't see the movie. What's wrong with y'all? All right. Hallelujah. You are special. You're powerful. You're unique. You are amazing. You are incredible. God made you to house his presence. Everything else that you've been told is a lie. Glory to God. God has spoken the truth. He shaped you and formed you out of the dust of the ground, made you just right so he can live on the inside of you. My God from heaven. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. Hallelujah. You've been listening to too many messages, the wrong messages. Get back to the book. Oh, yeah. All right. Go ahead, BG. I don't want too far. My God from heaven. Hallelujah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just, I'm just going to read these verses. We in, we're on point number three now. What in creation can contain God? We didn't say the spirit. Because in the beginning, the spirit was one with God. When God breathed into man and man became a living soul, it was a marriage, his spirit, our spirit together. That's what happens when we get saved. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So it's not two spirits in you. It's not the spirit of man and the Holy Spirit. They're one now. A marriage, that's that picture. Two have become one. But what physical thing in creation that has the ability to house God. It is your physical body. Because of the fall, we have condemned and damned the flesh and made it our enemy. We've, we've never truly restored what God has redeemed. So because we haven't, we're waiting to go to heaven so we don't have to deal with this old stinky nasty Okay. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Or don't you know that your spirit, that your body, not your spirit, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you? Why is the Holy Ghost in you? Isaiah 43 and 7 says, so I will call by my name, who I've for my Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the same spirit that raised Jesus from the... So the Holy Ghost is in you because that's who you're created for. So who is in you? Do you not know that you have the Holy Spirit from God and, and you don't belong to... Because you wasn't created for you. 2 Corinthians 6.16 says... And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temples of the living God, as God has said. What did God say? I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. That's your temple, your body. Okay, so when we say flesh, let's give some basic definitions and, and context to really what we mean by this word. Okay, 
The flesh attributes. The flesh is a nature, a motive, a mindset, and a body, a physical body. So the flesh is a nature, which means it has uh, inherent characteristics. It has things that it was uh, that, that were inborn in it, that is natural or organic for it. Just like a bird did not have to learn how to fly, a whale did not have to learn how to swim because it was innate. It was passed down to it from its creator. The flesh, too, has characteristics or attributes. It has a nature, okay? Motive. There's a, Your flesh is a motive. You can be motivated by the flesh or the physical body or physical appetites. Yes, you see a Red Lobster commercial, and now you are motivated to fulfill the desires of the flesh by eating some crab legs, some shrimp. Okay? It's also a mindset. The flesh is a certain way that you think, a certain way that I think. And like we said, it's also a physical body. The flesh comes from the dirt, which is the earth. This is highlighting that the flesh comes from what's natural, what's physical. So there's a really unique relationship between your flesh and the earth. There's a real unique relationship between your flesh and natural things and physical things. Okay? Flesh deals with the earth. I'm sorry. It deals with the exterior, what's outside, what's natural, physical tendencies. Um, there's things that are like um, for example, it's natural for you to want to pamper yourself or to be, um, I, I, sometimes I don't enunciate this word right, but I might need your help. Comforted. Mm -hmm. I did good. You did good. Okay, thank you. I'm with, I'm, here, I'm with a professor here. You did good. But, you're, but physically, your body wants to be loved. It loves right. physical <clears throat> pleasures, massages. Hair rubs. Yes. You heard the woman of God said, yes. <laughs> but it does. To have a person pat you on the back, to be hugged. These are physical, inherent, they're not evil, inherent desires of your body. The they're not what? Sir? They're not what? They're not evil. They're not evil. They're not evil. At all. They're not evil. So it's not evil for me to want my feet rubbed. I feel the anointing taking me somewhere. I don't know where the anointing is taking me. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay. I was just checking. Maybe I need to take some to my one. Nah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. The, 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 the flesh is located where? On the earth, mm -hmm. also in the world and the mind. The world and the earth are not the same. They're different. The biggest issue for the earth, the biggest challenge for the earth is the world. The world is the system that's set up on the earth. Okay, so the flesh lives in the world, which is a system. It also lives on the earth, and it also lives in your mind, because it's a mindset, okay? The flesh produces physical pleasures, okay? Um, normally, when we think about physical pleasures, 
we think about them in an evil way because we, we normally deal with the flesh after it failed. And, and we have been taught. Yep. We have been taught that way. But n not knocking our forefathers and foremothers because they, they, they shared and taught what they knew. So they're not throwing shade on anyone. But we have been taught. Amen. Okay, go on, BJ. And, and 10 years from now, somebody is going to listen to one of my teachings and say, he had this part right, but mm, because that's how it's supposed to be. We're supposed mm -hmm. to continue to evolve in greater understanding. That's right. But drawing from the previous generation the level of grace and truth that they had right. and build there upon. Yeah. So the greatest thing that you and I could do for amazing leaders is continue the truth in the earth that they brought. And that's what Jesus told his disciples to do. You want to honor me? Preach the truth that I've preached as I go away. You steward the truth I brought in the earth and that'll bring honor to me. So from a biblical standpoint, when you go into the New Testament, from a biblical standpoint, the flesh is seen as doing life apart from the spirit. Mm -hmm. When you get to, you know, Romans, actually right after Genesis 3 is where you start to see it from a negative point of view. Okay? But we're not talking about Adam when he fell. We're talking about Adam when he was formed. Right? So, what, one of the things that we're going to all do to, today is recognize the true beauty and nature of the flesh. Yes. Say that again, please. Yes. We're going to recognize the true beauty and nature of the flesh. Just rub your arm, nice and gentle. See how you, your body loves that? Feels good? Yes. It's used to that. Yes. All right? All right? In a healthy way. Cleared it up. Right. No, it's just total. Right. Okay. How the flesh contains God. So the, the original three-way relationship. So there's this beautiful picture um, in the garden. Did we, oh, no, go ahead. Okay. Um, there's this three-way relationship that took place in the garden. It was between the flesh, the spirit, and Eden, which is the place that obviously Adam and Eve were in. Um, so before the flesh became, uh, corrupted, the flesh was plugged into the spirit, completely plugged into the spirit. So the, the flesh and its physical appetites, do, do they still have the, yeah, where's my, okay. where, where are they? we got another oh, illustration okay. for you. There you go, Sam. Thank you. <clears throat> Perfect. Yeah, I was looking for this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You mean you yep. want to do Thank you, sir. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, that will be you. This a workshop. She said we got the plugs in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before, before man sinned, this is what the relationship looks like, looked like between your spirit, Holy Spirit, which were one, and the physical body. Your physical body was completely plugged into the Holy Spirit. Which is important to know that this power strip, even though it's power. It's not a principle. It's a person. Yeah. The flesh, your physical appetites, wanting to be loved, wanting to be rubbed, wanting to be all those things that we desire, was plugged into the Holy Spirit, 
And as long as it was plugged into the Holy Spirit, it was satisfied. Watch it. It was plugged in. So when Eve came, it wasn't to satisfy an itch. Adam didn't need a woman because he couldn't control himself. And, you know, I'm, I see kids in here, but you know what I mean. He didn't need a woman because he had no self-control because one of the fruit of the spirit was self-control. And, and his flesh was plugged into self-control. Mm -hmm. So man was completely satisfied in his personal relationship with the power source. So being connected to God was enough for not just him spiritually, but for him physically. So the thing that your body really craves the most Is to be plugged in. Now, can I, you, you want to say something on this thing? I'm gonna, no, go on. Okay. I'm going to let you go. Okay. Let you go. So, so when Adam failed, man, the physical body, became unplugged. Unplugged. <laughs> and... The desire of the body has now been looking for some, a place to plug in. And because it never heard about the source, because of basket heads, won't share it. Don't be a basket head. It finds substitutions. Mm -hmm. And plug into abusive alcohol, pride, and all these other substitutions, not because it's evil and demonic, yeah. but because it's been separated from its power source and it's trying to find fulfillment. We've deemed it demonic and our enemy because it's just looking for God like all the rest of creation. So, can we have a moment? Yeah. Do us a favor. Yeah. Pascal, you want to have them do that? Go ahead and do it. So, okay. Go ahead. I want you to take just a moment, and I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, where in your life are your substitutions? Now, before you do this, I want you to just really hear this. Your marriage can be a substitution. You married because you were longing for love. And you finally found the love that satisfies you. And wonder why the marriage becomes such pressure, an idol, a strain, because you're looking for love from this person. But when you're plugged into God who is love, you don't marry because you're needing love. You're marrying because you're connected to it to give it. And someone else can plug into you because you're connected to the source. So we make our spouse 
the power source. You don't marry because you're looking for love. Your position at church. You don't get the affirmation you feel like you deserve. The honor and the credit. You can say that. I'll say this for you. It's okay. I'll say The pastors don't call you enough to say thank you. First lady walked right by me. She seen me and she didn't even say hey. Pastor only, only speak and hang with them. And then you turn into a church shopper because what I'm looking for at that church, they don't have it. So I'm trying to find my tribe are the people I'm looking for so I can plug into them. <clears throat> Our friendships. You should have been there for me. I thought 15, Jesus said, hey, I call you friend now. I don't I no longer call you servant, but I call you a friend. Why? So that you don't be trying to plug into other people for friendship. You can get it from me too. There is no relationship in your life that is not fulfilled in God. Because then he will be putting the safety of your relationships at the expense of another person. And people are too inconsistent for that role. Your self-esteem. You won't leave the house without makeup. Bro won't do a post because he's insecure about his weight. Kid, you the loudest person in the testing, testing some tongues now. But, but it's true. You, you, you guys see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so a part of redeeming the flesh tonight, if you and I tonight are going to leave here in the nature and the beauty of the flesh, we have to find the substitutions. And sometimes we're not real enough with ourselves to say what it is, but that's okay. Because if you ask God, he will reveal it to you. I want you to take about maybe one minute and ask the Lord, Lord, I'm here to be honest and transparent. Please reveal to me my substitutions. And I want you to write those things down. Those of you who are watching streaming live, worshiping streaming live, you do the same thing. Do the exact same thing. Pray. Ask Holy Spirit to reveal to you where you are plugging into substitutions right now. I'm going to give you about 60 seconds. If you want to borrow a pen, Brother Guy will lend you one, or Damien will lend you one that you will return at the end of service. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> If you do not want to write it down, you can always flip to the memo section in your phone. Or you can do it electronically.
Amen. We're going to give you about 10 more seconds. I still see a few heads down, still writing. Give you about 10 more seconds. Amen. Now, before, before uh, Brandon carries us to the next point, I just wanted to, I want to share something with you in regards to uh, what he just shared with us in, in terms of uh, trying to plug in uh, to substitutions to satisfy or gratify this, this need and desire of the flesh that can only be satisfied or filled, fulfilled by God. Now think, because if, if I'm going to any time, I don't know if you know electri electricity or not, but when you plug into something and it's the wrong voltage, the first thing that you'll knows, notice is that what you've, plugged, what you've plugged in starts to heat up. Long before it's destroyed, it'll start heating up because it was not made to fulfill or carry the voltage load that is necessary for what that device is trying to pull. When you try to plug into people for love, validation, self-esteem, provision, and all these things that they are not equipped to provide, you are abusing them. Before long, you're going to destroy them. Watch this, though. Those of you who have tried to be God for somebody, because it's not just their fault, it's also your fault, because we have a tendency of enabling, and because of the, what we need, we try to be God for somebody, because we have this sense and desire to feel validated, important, valued, and needed. And we end up putting ourselves in the place of abuse. But most importantly, we train this individual. And we're born again believers to seek us out as God. I'm going to go a little further. This is not to slam anything. But y'all know your pastor has talked about this before. That our church, not Christian Life Center Worldwide. I'm talking about the body of Christ went through this same thing in the 90s and early 2000s. The pastors made themselves superstars. It was my anointing. If you want my anointing, then you need to come and do this and sit under me and, and sow into my life if you want my anointing. First of all, I thought it was his. Oh, you need a word? Then you need to come see me. I'll give you a word when, the, when we all know that everyone can prophesy. We all hear the voice of God. Amen. And so it's imperative and important for us that we approach relationships properly. Those of you who are leaning on your spouse right now, drawing on them for God-like satisfaction, you need to reassess yourself. Anything that we do outside the purpose for which something is created is called abuse. If you take a screwdriver and you nail with it, you can probably get that nail in, but you have abused that screwdriver. It was not made for that. Tell your neighbor, I was not made to be God for you. The interesting thing that in Brandon's illustration as we went through this, though, is that the thing is, Brandon, will you hold this for me, please? That as he said, that when I'm, when I'm plugged into the right source and the source being God, then I, can, I become something that somebody else can tap into. Yeah. Hallelujah. With a little tweaking here, I can t they can tap into me, but they're not really drawing on me. They're drawing on the source, and I become a conduit through which God flows into the life of another. But everything that I was designed to do is to point all the way back to the source. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. Not trying to be God for people. We're going to read in a few moments that God was teaching. He's, he's taught us and given us a, a instructions for us to lead others back to him. Amen. 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 Well, give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely incredible. Um, <clears throat> the birth of the world. The world is the greatest substitution for the flesh. It is the greatest substitution for the flesh. We draw our perspective on life from the world, from the culture, from what's trending, from the movies, from the doctors, from the lawyers, from the scientists, from the educational system, we draw, we make Siri and Google the Holy Ghost. We draw from the world the role of the Spirit. So it has become the greatest substitution. 1 John 2, 14 through 17 says, I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God remains in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Verse 15, do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 16. For all that is in the world, watch this, think about this. The only thing that's in the world is the lust of the the lust of the and the pride of life keep your microphone up and the pride of life These things is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away and also is lust. But the one who does the will of the Father, a will of God, continues to live. When Adam sinned, he brought a new world to the earth. At first, the earth was under the influence of God's spirit. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in John 1. Uh, in the beginning, God created the, and, and the what? Earth. And the word, earth was without form and darkness on the face of the sea. And the spirit. Of God was doing what over the hovering. So the world that influenced the earth and formed it and created it and brought the stuff into it was the spirit. That's why it was wisdom or safe for God to actually form your body from the dirt or the earth because the earth was pure. So pure, he can make your body from it. The only thing in creation that can contain him. Amen. 
When Adam sinned, he changed the thing that was influencing earth. The Spirit of God left, was no longer influencing the earth, and now a new system came or a new world came. And John said, let me tell you what this world is built on. The lust of the flesh. Because, once again, when he fell, he became unplugged. So what does this unplugged man do? He tries to fulfill it by creating a whole entire system hoping it satisfies him being plugged in. So all that's in this world is the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. life. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten that whoever believe in him should not perish but have 17. For God did not send his son into the world to con. Why? Because he realized it's trying to. So why would he condemn it when he understands it just needs him? But we've condemned it. So God sent his son, right? Son is spiritual. He sent an offspring, a part of himself, a measure of himself, right? You remember we reading John? We read, is it, did I, did we use it? I don't think we used it in this one. Okay. So remember, we was reading John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, you know, uh, was God. And he was in the beginning with God, and now everything was made by him, and nothing was made except it was made by him. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And that light dwelled in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend, uh, comprehend it. <clears throat> there was a man sent from God. His name was John. This man was sent to be a witness of this light. He was not this light, but he was sent to be a witness of this light. You jump down to verse 14. And the Word became flesh. Think about this. Think about this. He sent his son spiritual, which is the Word, and the Word became flesh. He sends his Son as the answer to the world. How did he come, though? Flesh. Because he realized if the world could see someone plugged in, If the world could see someone plugged in, then now that plug-in becomes a model, the hope, the truth about them, the reconnector to God. So he sends a son back like what he sent from the beginning to be his glory so that people can see, revelation, light, what it looks like to be plugged into the source. And he realized this. So that's why his parables, his examples, he was using natural stuff because he realized people were more connected with this, but he knew that they were longing for something. So he would say stuff like this. He who hungers and thirsts for he using natural stuff because he realized, I know you're trying to fulfill your thirst. I know you're trying to quench. Yeah. I know you're trying to eat. Yeah. If you come to me, I'll give you living water yeah. that you'll never thirst again. Natural stuff. I am the bread of life. Yeah. If any man eat from me, because yeah. he's like, I understand that you're looking to be plugged back in. And he's using all these natural examples to say, I'm your satisfaction, not just spiritually, but also I'm the thing that your body has really been craving. Second Corinthians 
4.3, but if our gospel is hidden, mm -hmm. it is hidden to those who are lost. Yeah. The God of this, the God of this, all that's in the world is the lust of the, the lust of the, the pride of, the God of this world has blinded their minds of those who do not believe. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Check out the connection. Jesus said, listen, the prince of this world is coming. He calls Satan the prince, the leader of this world, the God of this world. What's in the world? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. So what Jesus is saying is this. Your biggest warfare isn't demons. The God of this world is coming. The ruler of this world is coming. Mm -hmm. What's in the world? So he's saying, he's saying, how is the devil ruling the world? Because your flesh ain't plugged in yet. All that's in the world that he's ruling is the lust of your flesh. So really, spiritual warfare ain't about Jezebel. She just uses the lust in your flesh. It ain't about Leviathan and all these demons. All they're using is the lust of your flesh, the lust of your eyes, and the pride of life. So you don't even have to focus on the devil. Just plug your flesh back in, and you can say the ruler of this world is coming, but he has nothing, nothing in, in me. me. What happens when you plug back in and your body is satisfied with God? Then how does he tempt you? How does he tempt you when there's no more lust of your eyes? When you do what, what, what Job 30 says, I have made a covenant with my eyes not to look upon a person to lust after them. What happens when the light of your body, I mean the light of your body is the eye, but your eye is single. You have one way of seeing life. How can he get to you? Name one temptation that don't affect and bring some type of pleasure. It wouldn't be temptation if it didn't. We focus on darkness, the devil, what he's doing, how big he is, blah, 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 blah. And Jesus is like, man, you don't get it. He wouldn't even have a system in the world if you didn't see him. Okay, so we really want to drill home this example of the world. Yeah. You want to leave that? So to, to, to give me, I need five volunteers. Five volunteers. All right, come on. Come on, yes, sir. That's two. Okay, come on, Damien. That's three. Come on, baby girl. That's four. I still need one more. Nobody from, come on, my brother. Y'all step up on stage for me. Everybody just go up on stage. Y'all get me I'll just spread right across. Don't go too far back. Yeah. It's good. Thank you very much. Y'all get to see for what I see. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so we want to drill this. We want to drill this illustration home. Each person represents a, a pillar, a system, if you will, of the world. 
And we talked about this a couple Sundays ago. You remember I told you that if you pay attention to the world system, if you watch the government, you will see that when they want to bring change in the earth or in the community or in the country, all they have to do is drop in the change that they want to make into a particular system and watch it trickle through. It said that those mountains or those systems is a system of education. It is finance, business. It is arts and entertainment. If you notice, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but when they wanted to, be after the presidency, the, the, the president, the just Donald Trump, after, after his presidency, you know, there was a lot of racism and a lot of stuff to riled up, and now they want to try to dial that back. So if you watch all the commercials now, the commercials are showing you mixed couples. Have y'all noticed that? Hallelujah. The LGBTGQ community, I'm sorry, I just, I'm just saying, pushing their agenda. So now everywhere that you look, you see homosexual relationships. They're dropping it in the system. And now, watch, even in the system of education, they begin to drop it in. So they add homosexuality education to the sex education so they can train and teach and educate your children while they're early. They're programming their minds early and then tell you it's nothing you can do about it. We're going to teach your children what... Okay. <laughs> they represent... The, I'm sorry, y'all. They represent those systems. Now, watch this now. All of these systems are built or they are standing on the stage. All of these systems are built on flesh unplugged. That's the problem with the systems. That's why they don't work, and that's why the enemy, as uh, 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 BG just shared, that's why the enemy wants to use those things to create the change in the world and rule it the way that he wants to. It will never work. It will never satisfy. Has the government been able to solve all the issues? No. no. They don't have a clue. People would always talk about, oh, well, you know, the church should, should feed all the hungry people and house all the homeless people. I said, how? The government couldn't even do it. And they have a trillion dollar budget. I don't know if you've seen the budget here. It's not a trillion. <laughs> Hallelujah. The system of education will never work without God. The system of finance will never work without God. The system of family will never work without God. I don't care how you try to redefine the family. God knows what the family is supposed to be like. He created the first one. Everything man tries to do, oh, no, 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 you, how, how do you feel? Oh, you feel like you're a girl? Then we're going to make you a girl. You were born a boy. We can change that. It will not work. The only thing that is in the world is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. No matter what the world system builds, it will never work because it is built upon flesh, which the stage represents, which is unplugged. If we get back to God, the marriage relationships will work right. If we get back to God, finance will work right. If we get back to God, business will work right. If we get back to God, government will work right. When the government stops excluding God, and submits to him. Even worldwide, you will see in various countries, including the United States, where you will watch the government oppress its people. It is a government that is unplugged and built upon flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all got that? Come on. Thank y'all very much. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on one second. Hold on one second, you guys. Go ahead. Come on, BG. Okay, so... So, Mark 16, verse 14 through 16. Afterward, he appeared unto his uh, 11 
as they sat at, sat and at meat and unbreaded them. This is definitely King James. And breaded them with, with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he had risen. And he said unto them, watch this, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world. Mm -hmm. We've taught the church mm -hmm. that's unholy. Stay don't go in there. It. Stay yeah. away from that. Ooh, that Jay-Z guy, you got to make sure you don't, oh, don't go into that. That's secular. So, question, if you don't go into the world, how are they going to know God? Jesus said, you are the light of the church. Temple, you're the light of the world. So, the commission is of vocalists. The commission, can't, bro, we're in the middle, what's your name? Yes, sir. Chad, so Chad, God is like, hey, Chad, come here. I know you've been doing great, and, and, and I want you to continue to serve at church, but um, I want to offer you a deal because I need your light in the system. So can you go into the secular? We're going to let you arts sign. Arts and entertainment. With arts and entertainment. Just That's pick it. one. He's arts and entertainment. That's and it. I want you to take your light, the revelation of who God is, into that system. And I want you to show them that they can plug in again. We see, put your hand back on the shoulder. We he posts a picture with Drake, and we say, "Oh, pastor, oh, he, he, he an that Illuminati man. pastor. He a he a one and M pastor. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh, look at the man of God. Mm -mm. Amen. And then he come back home." For church, and all of a sudden, y'all got a word, word for The Lord told me to tell you he been seeing the things you've been saying and doing. Oh, shut up. Oh, and you need to get out now before you are destroyed by fire. Me and the intercessors have been praying for you. Your mama, boy, I can't believe you with them devils. Now watch this. Watch this. Why does your teacher... Eat with tax collectors and sinners. If he knew the kind of woman she was, if that ain't that pharisaical religious mm -hmm. stuff, and she said, hey, here's what you don't know. It's the sick that needs a doctor. I have not come for the righteous. I've come to bring sinners to repentance. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. They heard Jesus and said, okay, but they should have heard Jesus and said, let me sit down. Since you're coming, since you're sitting with tax collectors and sinners because they realize they need a savior and they sick, I need to sit down too because my religious mindset is another indication I'm not plugged in. I'm not plugged in. And I have a form of God, but denying the... So don't keep telling your child he's going to be a pastor. Tell him you're going to be the most anointed doctor they ever seen in the next pandemic that come I prophesy to you son you gonna come up with the answer send them into the world and let them be the light that BG yes sir because what's been happening instead of plugging in hold that for me like yes sir people are not really plugged in Look, look at me. Wow. And you can tell by what is being produced out of their lives just because they showed up at church. <laughs> and look plugged in. They look like they plugged in. Wow. Plugged in. 
Wow. If, if we are going to change the systems of the world, if we're going to change the system of the world, we, we can't isolate ourselves mm -mm. into church. Mm -mm. God didn't send us to take names. He sent us to take over. Oh. This is how it's going to have to be done. And listen to this. You, you, can't, you cannot sit back and say, just let them do it. Wow. 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 The enemy is working, and they have long-term agendas. Yes. But he's working through the flesh of unplugged people. God has a long-term agenda. I know the thoughts and the plans I think towards you. He has, a, he has, a, he has an agenda. And, and that agenda is just what BG said. To send you into the various systems to bring light, to be an example, to bring the revelation, and to cause that system and the people in it to plug back in. They, many of them don't even know. Watch this now. The illustration, while we're judging, as he just mentioned, they, they're not evil. They're just, they're just trying to, trying to find somewhere to plug in. This is it right here. This right here is going to change the world. And this message that we're delivering, it's going to change the world. Change the world. Thank you. BG. <clears throat> okay. We're going to... So, there's this conflict. I was just going to tell you that they, they have everything that we have. Okay. okay. So, so if... No, I'm yeah. So if we wanna, if we wanna go fast, cause y'all been a good class, yes, sir. haven't y'all been a good class? Maybe they maybe they flesh is tired. They wanna go home and go to sleep. They're not that tired. <laughs> but but y'all not that tired. But y'all not that tired. But y'all do need us to speed up, don't you? I love y'all. Y'all see that? They're like, no, Pastor, go on, do what you do. All right, all right, all right. Uh, okay, yes, sir. All right, so the conflict between the, 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 all right, this is incredible. So the conflict between the earth, which is the flesh, and the spirit, the conflict, now you, you recognize the conflict clear now, where it's not, it's, it's, I know we've taught it this way, the, the flesh versus the spirit, but it's really the flesh looking for the spirit, and it's just unaware. And all in the New Testament, you see this contrast. Galatians 5, 16, I say then, walk in the, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the, and, the, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, this sounds like they're against each other, but watch what he's saying. He said, listen, once you... Once you plug the flesh back into the spirit, you can be led by it. Walk in the spirit. Do you walk in the spirit without your body? No. Your body is what walks under the influence of the spirit. So they're only contrast until you plug it back in. Once you bring the body Back to Eden. Back to God. It now can come under the influence of God and be led by the Spirit. So it's not your enemy. It's created to serve you. Romans 8, 2 through 9. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this just for time's sake, but I'll, I'll kind of get into it. Uh, I'll actually just jump right into verse, who God, verse 3. You guys good? For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh. So the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, they were actually trying to, they were trying to obey the Ten Commandments. 
through the flesh because they realize it was good. So they're trying to do it, but it's a problem because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They can't plug into the Spirit. So they were trying to fulfill it uh, through the flesh, uh, and they could not do it because it was weak. God did by sending his only son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. So you see, the flesh is a mindset. It does have a certain way of thinking, okay? For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, okay? Um, because the... the because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then they are that, that are in the flesh cannot please God. But if you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. So what is he saying? He's saying this. I'll just reiterate this point. Remember earlier, it's, it's in your notes. When Paul is talking about the flesh, he is talking about your body that is not, your body not being under the influence of the spirit. Yeah. So when he say the flesh, he's like, man, you're living in the flesh. He's saying, you're not living by the influence of the spirit. You're not living influenced by God. You're not living plugged in. You have a way of thinking, a way of the world, lust yeah. of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. And he's like, man, I'm telling you, if you plug back in, you can actually live the spirit-led life with your body being restored back to what God intended it to be from the very beginning. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to six, point number six. Everybody say redeem. Redeem. Restore. Restore. Redeem means, you want to take it over? Mm, go ahead. Redeem means to gain or regain possession of yes. in exchange for payment. Hallelujah. So let's say if your car was possessed or repossessed, it was possessed by you initially, and then it got repossessed, okay, and they're coming to get your car. Now, when, you know, you, you, so you give them, they come and get your car, and they're taking it to, back to the dealership. On the way back to the dealership, they get your car, get into an accident. Big dent inside, boom. Okay, and they wheel it on the dealership. You run down and say, hey, I got the payment, I got the payment. Woo, my pastors gave me a check. <laughs> come on, y'all better receive that. My pastors gave, no, it's fine, I was joking, I was joking. Get out the flesh, get out the flesh. Oh. But you go down there and you pay for the car to redeem it, to gain back possession of it. So you pay the price to get the car back. However, it has a huge dent in it. You've redeemed it, but you have not restored it. Restoring it is getting the dent out of the car. We've redeemed, we've been redeemed, but not restored. We've redeemed the flesh, but we have not restored the message of the flesh. And we just live with this indention that the flesh is demonic, nasty, and all these other things. Instead of restoring it by getting it back to God. Make sense? Okay, so the greatest... Craving, longing of your physical body is the presence of God. God. It is why when you come to church, you right. love church. You're in the presence of God. Oh, my God. I just love the way I feel when I leave church. Your physical body begins to respond to the presence of God. Galatians 5, 24. And they that are crisis has crucified the flesh with its affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Crucifying the flesh has been taught to us as fasting. Yeah. Yeah. Beating it down. Beating it down. Exactly. Bring your flesh under. Submit. Submit. Mortify the flesh. Whip it into submission. That's it right there. Beat it down. And then, you remember the old saints? You remember this, Ivan. The meaner you look, mean the more anointed you were. 
It meant that you had your flesh under subjection. Oh, don't play with the man of God. <laughs> or when you came in looking like, I've been fighting all week, honey. Oh, it's been a battle. But God is good. I've been bringing his flesh under subjection. And God knows it's been a fight for me. And so people are drooped down, sad, downcast. It meant that they were spiritual. Or if they were militant and mean, it meant that they were spiritual. Brandon, too, even in the, uh, the, uh, the, in the early church days, that they would go up the side of the mountain on their knees, yeah. crawl up the side of the mountain, and then whip themselves. And that was a way of crucifying and punishing the flesh to beat it down in all of its wickedness. It's intense. They got to the top, their knees would be bleeding, but, but thank God they beat it unto submission and God was pleased. How could that make God happy? Go ahead, BG. Wow. So crucifying the flesh really looks like this. When you, when you go and plug back in, here's what happens. Here's what happens. You plug in, and your body has been so used to him, her, it, drinking, doing what you want. It's, it's been so used to the substitution that it has to adjust. The word death means separation. So your body goes through a death of crucifixion. It begins to separate from the thing that it was used to. And it feels like a type of death. And what you and I feel is the flesh changing its appetite. One of the hardest things for us to do is eat healthy, except for this giant. But if you're like me, if you can identify with me and my weakness, somebody tell you, no sweets. Come on, right there, help. No fried foods. No ice cream, no Starbucks, no coffee. For 30 days, you begin to call on a name that's above every name. Because your body has been so used to, now you know it's good for you. That's why you're going to do it. But it's a battle because you've been so used to it. It doesn't mean sweets are evil. It just means your appetite now has to adjust. That's the crucifying of the flesh. It is not your enemy. I just want to say that, and, and as you make that adjustment, sometimes it takes a little time. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're going to change your palate, if you're going to change your diet, if you're really going to change your diet and begin to eat healthy, mm -hmm. it takes time for you to become acclimated. Mm -hmm. Then after a while, the craving goes away. You don't even desire the other stuff. You, you, you look at that food and you be like, oh, that's disgusting. So she said, Lady Ruth and I, you know, she, every once in a while she'll crave some, some, some French fries or fast food, McDonald's type stuff. But then when it comes, she's like, dang, this is... When you look at the hamburger, you're like, what is it, Lord? It's the world. Yeah. The French fries, McDonald's used to be the one. The French fries don't even taste the way. It and that ain't the same Big Mac. I don't know what they did with the no, day. No, no, that no. ain't the same Big Mac. That whole thing. Come on, praise team and musicians, please. It's, it's, this, we don't, we, even in church, we don't give it time. And, and so what happens is, even as revelation like this comes, this is going to take a moment. We're going to show you an illustration as we close out because I promise you activation. So I, I don't even want to. I know it's late, but I do not want to at least one. It'll only take a few moments. It's going to be good for you to, to feel it, to participate in it, to do it so that you will know it. Amen. And I, oh, go ahead, BJ. I was about to say, I, I think we need like a part two because them activations. I mean, listen, pastor. 
pastor had worked really hard on it. So our, our gift sets, I, I, I need a man like this in my life because I'm like, I'm like, I, I hear this stuff and I just kind of go. You know what I mean? I'm like, it, and then pastor was like, Brandon, <laughs> you know, in order for the people to come into comprehension, we need to write, write the vision, make it plain. And I'm like, okay, 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 well, we need to work. I need you, Brandon, to get, I'm like, man, me? So I just kind of like, I mean, I put it together the best I could, you know. And then he takes it, and we talk three days straight, and he's like, okay, so here, what are you meaning here? And brother was working. I mean, up until the last minute, he was working. And I'm like, Pastor, I'm so sorry, man. I made you do all this work. But there was so much work that went into this. And, and these activations that God has given us will absolutely awaken not just your spirit, but your flesh. Your flesh is so amazing that when it touches a person while plugged in, it heals them. So amazing that when it says, come out of her, the demons leave. That's your flesh. And you need to see that. In, like, you need to see it come through your hands. In your mouth. Amen. Last verse, Psalm 63.1. And this is what passes. We're going to um, move into this illustration. This, this, this verse is incredible. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Mm. My flesh mm. longs for God. Yeah. It wants to be plugged in. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Go ahead. So, uh, we want you to pay very close attention to your flesh as you begin to sense the presence of God arise in the room. Okay? One of two things. Number one, you will feel the resistance of the flesh mm -hmm. because the flesh is like, this is not my appetite. I'm used to the substitution. When you feel like that, the language we use in the church is press through. Mm -hmm. Press through that. We're going to break through that. Lift your voice. Wave your hands. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You're transitioning the flesh from its previous appetite into a place to recognize there's a new appetite that fulfills it more. Especially in praise. Like worship, we can hide. We go, oh, shit, dude. But when praise comes... There is nothing that gratifies your flesh like praise. Your spirit loves worship. They that worship him must worship him in and in truth. But your flesh responds differently when you let yourself loose in praise. And that's why it's the biggest hurdle. Because you're thinking about how I look, what I have on, what people are going to think. But once you break through that, and get into this river, you're like, oh my God, this is, this is everything. And you become what people call a praiser. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is break past this barrier of praise. And I need you to see how your body responds when you press through for those who would feel that pressing. And that's not, that's not hard for us to feel, especially if you had a long day. You're like, oh, I don't really feel like it. But once you press through, watch how you feel. Okay? And then we'll do worship and maybe close out. Okay. So, band. They're coming. Praise him. Come on. They got a praise song for oh, us. Praise God. Okay, so go ahead and get that flesh out that seat. It may be Stand a up. Yeah. We're closing out. Yeah. Get some room, too. Make some room. Now, now remember... 
Hold on, Vamp. Remember, the, the, the purpose of the exercise is, is we want you to tune in, and as you pay attention to what's happening, even with your body, as you begin to worship. This is going to help you, as, as uh, Brandon just shared with us, when we were talking about in church, the language we break, uh, press through, press in, break through, keep going, lift your voices, lift yourself, come on, raise your praise, all those kinds of things. There, it's sending the same kind of message, but I want you to see and take note of what's happening on the inside of you. This revelation right here is going to help you to do it when you're not here. It's going to really help you to understand, like, no, 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 I just got some bad news, but I can press in because I am plugged in. God's going to give me what I need. Pay attention to what's happening. We're teaching you so that you, you are no longer dependent on the substitution. It sings, we want this thing deep. We want it to sink deep. Receive all of this right here. Y'all ready for it? It's already working.
joy of God, the peace of God. The, it just all emerges. Now, actually, think about the lyrics this time when you sing them and involve your mouth and just watch. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, we done. Oh, my bad, keyboard, my bad. Keyboard player, what's up, sir? Come on, talk to us, bro.
that you really, really, now, now what we shared tonight, I want you to meditate on that thing. Email the notes to yourself, share them with a friend, and you can go back and walk through this, restudy it. Hold on, drummer. Restudy it. Uh, share it with someone else. Amazing things happen as you begin to teach it to other people and recall what you've heard tonight. Then, of course, since we live streamed it, then the entire class, the entire uh, workshop is, is uh, right there in your app as well. Amen. So you can go back and revisit and you can also share it with your friends as well and watch BG cut up all the way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give him a great big God bless you. Y'all know this is my home church when I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yep, and he said, so, I don't know, we're going to figure out something maybe. How long are you going to be here, BG? Till Monday. Till Monday? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, I mean, he really, he really took a lot of your pastor's time this past week. I had already repented. You didn't have to... He repented, but the debt has not been paid. I thought Jesus paid it all. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, so I mean, I'm going to talk to him, and maybe uh, maybe we can do something on Sunday. You going to be around Sunday, or you got to end up? I'm going to be around Sunday. Maybe we'll do something Sunday. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yep. All right. Brandon, you're going to give us our benediction. Thank sure. You, God. God bless you. And I just felt like the Lord wanted us to just say this one thing. Remember, remember the flesh when it's plugged in comes back to its original position. The plug in is not principles. It's not dogmas. It's not like it's a person. Yeah. Yep. As you and I plug into the person, the Holy Spirit the body comes in alignment. And what Pastor was doing with this, with this last example is saying, the more you and I spend time with God, the more our bodies come into alignment. And you can do that as much in your car, take walk, secret place, whatever. Just spend time in his presence and what will be natural and organic will be your body coming under the influence of the spirit. So, Father, we thank you so much for the spirit of wisdom you, and revelation that is in this house yes, that you Lord. have shared. Thank you so much for um, us here, this part of the body and what you're doing. Father, we pray that this truth, this revelation, would revolutionize the way we see our bodies that you've given us. That is your temple that is precious, that's created to serve your mandate in the earth. Let it be redeemed and restored. Give us dreams and, and visions about this truth. Awaken in us your desire for our body so that your power, your life, and your desire may be seen in and through us. Thank you for this house. Thank you for the leaders of this house. We give you glory and praise that they would take the time to even do such a thing because of the value your word has to us as people. So we love you. We give you praise for it. We love you. We love you. We love you in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Amen. Amen.